This is Luca Parmitano's spacesuit, who almost drowned in space. And this is Joseph Kittinger, who almost lost his hand due to damage to his suit's shell. I will visually show why being in open space is extremely dangerous. And I'll tell you what happens to our bodies there, and what tragedies have already occurred in the history of space exploration. And in the end, I'll tell you about the first human spacewalk, which almost turned into a cruel drama. If you think that in today's times, with the level of technological advancements, it's safe to venture into open space, you are deeply mistaken. Even with advanced electronics and multi-layer protection, an astronaut's suit is still vulnerable to space debris that can penetrate it and damage the astronaut's vital organs. Help won't come instantly in open space, and the journey back to the spacecraft will take time, making the survival of injured astronauts in outer space highly unlikely. Fortunately, lethal outcomes from suit damage haven't been recorded yet. However, issues with damage Damages are not uncommon and can lead to serious complications. Moreover, it's essential to consider that any electronics can sometimes malfunction. The spacesuit may not have any visual defects, but may have disruptions in the life support system. This has happened several times, and I'll tell and show you more about it with specific examples. Additionally, astronauts may simply get tired during a spacewalk. Their spacesuits weigh up to 350 pounds, and although this weight isn't felt in microgravity, the elastic resistance astronauts face with every movement requires significant significant effort. Repairs on the ISS pose additional challenges, as astronauts need something to hold on to while tightening bolts to prevent rotation around their own axis. Such tasks in space are twice as difficult as on Earth and often lead to the development of painful calluses for researchers. Fatigue in such conditions can reduce attention, increasing the risk of additional problems. Astronaut disorientation with subsequent drift away from the space station. To minimize this risk, astronauts use an 85-foot steel cable when exiting the station, and the built-in jetpack and the spacesuit provides additional safety in case of emergencies. However, during the early space explorations, astronauts didn't have such equipment, adding risks to their missions. But in the world, there is one person who still navigates the cosmic expanses, and that's in the area of Pluto. I'll tell you now. Although it's commonly believed that humanity has left its mark only on two cosmic objects, Earth and the Moon, however, our level of development has already allowed us to send satellites beyond the inner part of the solar system, reach Pluto, and explore the mysterious Kuiper Belt. Of course, these distant journeys are carried out not by humans, but by unmanned spacecraft carrying humanity's knowledge into the fair reaches of space. Eh? A significant moment in the history of exploring distant planets was the launch of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft in 2006, with the goal of detailed exploration of Pluto and its moon Charon. This non-landing spacecraft conducted important research during its flight, crossing the orbits of Mars and the gas giants. In 2015, it sent high-quality images of Pluto to Earth, surpassing the capabilities of the Hubble telescope. After a successful flyby of Pluto, New Horizons continued its journey exploring other objects beyond Neptune, and even made a close flyby of the asteroid 2014 MU69 in early 2019. But what about the person I mentioned? A unique feature of the New Horizons mission is the presence on board of a portion of Clyde Tombaugh's ashes, an astronomer who discovered Pluto. Tombaugh, working at the Lowell Observatory, discovered this distant planet in 1930 and received numerous awards and global recognition for his discovery. His contribution was decided to be immortalized in a very unusual way. Uh, after his death, a part of his ashes was placed on board New Horizons at the initiative of his daughter, Annette. This symbolic gesture allowed Tombaugh to see Pluto closer than ever before, continuing his legacy of space exploration. It's sad and romantic, but what are the conditions like in space anyway? Space is an environment so different from Earth that every aspect of it seems like an incredible challenge for the human body. In this boundless space, Temperature extremes dominate. Under direct sunlight, the thermometer can soar to 200 degrees, while in absolute shade, it can quickly drop to 100 K just by turning the object to the other side. The absence of an atmosphere leads to a complete vacuum, where sound, as a phenomenon, becomes impossible. Waves have nothing to transform into, creating deafening silence. Astronauts say the only sound they manage to hear is the pulsation of their own blood. For any living being daring to venture beyond the protective walls of a spacecraft with Without proper protection like a spacesuit, the lack of air pressure becomes a deadly threat. I'll tell you more about how our bodies will react without protection later on. Additionally, space radiation, shielded by Earth's atmosphere, becomes a ruthless enemy in open space, threatening long-term health. It won't incinerate a person instantly, but the consequences will surely follow. This is the harsh reality of space. It captivates with its vastness and beauty, but remains ruthlessly inhospitable to humans. And to make it more vivid, I'll tell you about a few live 
examples of how space doesn't forgive mistakes. And I'll start with the case of Luca Parmitano. He was in a critical point of the station where three modules converged, and he had to investigate a narrow space by reaching out his hand. On the 45th minute of work, he felt an unusual sensation, water collecting on the back of his head. He immediately reported it to the ground. Cassidy, his colleague working nearby in open space, asked if he was sweating. Yes, I'm sweating, Luca replied. It was strange because there shouldn't be water in the helmet, but it was there, and it was increasing. The team on Earth speculated that the problem might be in the suit's drinking water system. Him. Luca emptied the water reservoir, but it didn't help. You might say, what's the problem? Did someone's helmet fog up in space? Moisture threatened to damage the suit's electronics and communication equipment, which could lead to a loss of communication and disruption of life support systems. Luca noted that the water had a metallic taste different from drinking water. While waiting for a solution from the control center, astronauts continued to watch their comrade when Luca felt that his neck ring was soaked with cold water. The control center ordered to stop all work and return to the station. The return began without incident, but passing through the hazard zones, Luca faced a new problem. Water got into his nose and he could only breathe through his mouth with communication with the center being cut off. When darkness fell, Luca found himself in complete isolation without communication with Earth and far from Cassidy. Water continued to fill the helmet, threatening his life. Relying on memory and knowledge of the station's structure, he managed to reach the airlock and enter inside, where the rescue team awaited him. Pumping the water out of the spacesuit, they discovered that the leak amounted to two liters. Six months after the incident, despite a thorough investigation, the exact cause of the leak was never determined. However, a damaged part was found, the fan pump separator. This dangerous incident prompted engineers to develop a redundant breathing system to prevent similar situations in the future. The lesson was learned, but the risk remained an integral part of space travel. But do you think such problems happened only once? Unfortunately, no. The next case is evidence of that. Although a spacesuit equipped with an impressive arsenal of electronics and multi-layer protection is more than just a special suit for spacewalks, sometimes it doesn't save. The tiniest space debris can cause serious harm, threatening the astronaut's life. On August 16, 1960, Joseph Kittinger made history by performing a record-breaking jump as part of the Excelsior mission. From a stratospheric height of 19.5 miles, he began his descent, during which, for four minutes, and 36 seconds, he controlled his movement using a braking parachute, reaching a speed of 6.15 miles per hour before opening the main parachute at an altitude of 3.5 miles became one of the many records set by this jump. Despite the loss of air tightness in his right glove during the descent, Kittinger successfully completed the jump, setting records for the highest parachute jump the longest controlled freefall with a braking parachute and the maximum speed of a human in freefall. In the conditions of the vacuum of spice, his hand significantly increased in size, but fortunately, after landing and a brief rehabilitation, it returned to normal without consequences. This incident emphasizes how critical the damage to even individual elements of a spacesuit can be. Another tense moment occurred in 1973 when astronauts Pete Conrad and Joe Kerwin faced an emergency situation during the repair of a solar battery on the Skylab station. They drifted away during the repairs. Their unexpected flight in open space, through brief thanks to a safety to theirs, vividly demonstrated how crucial every movement is in microgravity conditions. Modern space suits, consisting of more than 10 layers of protection, are designed not only to shield from extreme temperatures and vacuum, but also to ensure reliable sealing. They prevent oxygen leakage and protect astronauts from potential threats associated with depressurization. Even a slight breach in the suit's integrity could have catastrophic consequences including acute oxygen, starvation, and dangerous body expansion due to vacuum exposure. These cases serve as a reminder that conquering space requires not only courage and determination, but also an unprecedented level of technical reliability and attention to detail in space technology development. But let's for a moment assume that some desperate person decided to take a stroll in space without a spacesuit. What would happen to their body? Can a person simply explode due to pressure difference? Despite dramatic scenes in science fiction movies, in reality, a person doesn't undergo such intense pressure to have their body burst into pieces. The reason for this is quite obvious. The pressure inside our bodies is approximately equal to one atmosphere. In a situation where a person finds themselves in outer space, where pressure tends towards zero, air from their lungs rapidly escapes. Despite the pressure of 340 pounds per square inch, the human body must withstand this load thanks to the strength of tissues far from the fragility of dry twigs. And what about cold and low temperatures? Will they freeze instantly? The common belief that a person in the cold vacuum of space would immediately turn into an ice cube doesn't match reality. Space is a vacuum, which itself doesn't have a temperature. Heat dissipation in such an environment is only possible through radiation, which is practically negligible for humans. Therefore, a person would only feel a slight cooling 
freezing while water from their surface would start to evaporate, but instant freezing wouldn't occur. And yes, the blood in the veins won't boil, as often told in science fiction books, since its boiling depends on pressure, which is extremely low in space conditions, and burning won't happen either. At most, there would be burns from ultraviolet radiation, since space lacks the protective layer of the atmosphere that shields from solar rays. So, sunscreen is a must. But what about air? Suffocate. The person must. Certainly, without access to air, a person would face oxygen deficiency and lose consciousness within a short time. However, with a quick return to oxygen-containing conditions, recovery is possible. Thus, although space is extremely inhospitable for a person without proper protection, some popular beliefs about its effects on humans are not entirely accurate. Well, as promised at the beginning, it's time to talk about March 8, 1965, a day that became historic for humanity. It could have been tragic as well. Alexei Leonov made the first spacewalk in history, and Pavel Belyaev remained in the spacecraft Voskhod 2 as the mission commander. Before the launch, Sergei Korolev, the chief designer of the space program, addressed Leonov with a request. You, Leosha, just step out of the ship and back in. May the solar wind be in your favor. The spacewalk began immediately after reaching orbit, and by that time, both cosmonauts were already in their spacesuits. The ship's airlock was inflated, and Belyaev opened the hatch for Leonov to enter. The entire process took place in complete isolation from ground tracking stations, since the spacecraft was outside the equipment operating zone. The incident that occurred with Leonov during his return to the spacecraft became one of the most tense moments of the mission, although no one expected it. His spacesuit inflated in the vacuum, and he couldn't squeeze back into the airlock. Leonov decided to manually release some air from the spacesuit to reduce its size and facilitate the return to the spacecraft. This decision was extremely risky, but it worked, and the cosmonaut successfully returned on board. After the successful return to the spacecraft, Leonov and Belyaev faced another problem. The ship's orientation system was disrupted, and they had to take control themselves for a normal landing. They missed the planned landing site, and their capsule landed in the taiga, far from the expected location. The cosmonauts were found only two days into the search operation. Despite all the difficulties, the mission was successful, and both cosmonauts were awarded the titles of Heroes of the Soviet Union. As you can understand, space is an unpredictable thing. Even with the best equipment, hundreds of talented engineers, and incredibly trained astronauts beyond the door of the space station, there's only hope that this time space will be merciful. Thanks for watching.